Hi, my name is Lili. I'm a software engineer at Synopsys. And in the next five minutes, I would like to show you how the RPPX processor can help move natural language processing from the cloud to embedded devices at the edge. First, let me tell you what natural language processing is. Natural language processing, or NLP, is a kind of artificial intelligence that transforms unstructured text into a format that a machine can understand and take some action based on it. It's a broad area that includes a variety of different approaches and applications. The most common use cases of NLP are machine translation, text summarization, an example of this is sentiment analysis, which might be used to study customers' feedback. Automatic speech recognition, or ASR, which is an important part of any voice-controlled interface that is responsible for sound transformation into text. And dialogue systems, like chatbots. There are two main approaches to solving NLP tasks. Classical and deep learning. Deep learning approaches have proved better accuracy on big datasets, they contain less steps in the pipeline, and they are a lot faster to implement since they don't require feature engineering. That is why, for our demo, we chose the deep learning-based approach. NLP today usually happens in the cloud. This means that a typical pipeline of a voice-controlled system looks like this. If you ask your digital home assistants for weather, the request goes to the cloud and then comes back to your device. The only on-device processing that happens is the make word recognition that triggers your assistant to start listening to your request. In our demo, we were particularly interested in automotive navigation assistance, where sending the requests to the cloud isn't always possible. So we wanted to prototype a system that can understand spoken questions related to automotive navigation and do all the processing locally, meaning that we wanted to change this pipeline to this one. The idea is that a combination of smaller deep learning models trained to solve a certain task like GPS assistance can move the computations from the cloud to the edge with just a small compromise on accuracy. The advantages of this approach are the improved security, the ability to work without a network connection, and lower latency. Let's see what it looks like. How to get to the suburbs? How to get to the suburbs? As you saw, our demo system transforms the speech into text, which it then analyzes to understand the meaning of the phrase. It jointly detects the phrase's intent and the slot for each word. The intent is the overall meaning of the phrase or what the request is about, like directions or traffic conditions. Slots are the labels assigned for each word, which mark words that lie in the most relevant categories. In our case, these labels are location, path, waypoint, abstraction, and road condition. In our example, the recognized phrase is how to get to the suburbs. Its intent is getting directions. And the suburbs is labeled as waypoint. Now let's see a couple more examples. How to get to the city center. How is the traffic in the city center? How to get to the round lake. Is the road icy? How to get to the university? Here is the high-level diagram showing our solution's architecture. As mentioned in the beginning, we have chosen a VPX vector processor for our demo. The VPX family offers high-performance vector integer and floating-point DSP processing. Its CMD and VLIW parallelism provide high performance for both traditional DSP and neural network workloads, along with scalar instructions for executing standard C++ code. VPX is highly configurable and offers different variants, each with different vector lengths, which allows for further scalability within the family. 
The graphs that we used in our solution were mapped on ArcVPX using the Machine Learning Inference Library. It has support for a broad range of neural network kernels. It also supports some utility functions that are usually used in NN graphs. The MLI library is highly optimized for ArcVPX and some other ARC processors' IPs. Let's go into more details of the implementation. The demo contains two main parts, the host and the accelerator. The host is responsible for reading the audio file, doing any required pre-processing, sending the pre-processed input to the VPX processor, receiving the results and visualizing them. The ArcVPX processor runs two NN graphs using optimized MLI library kernels. First, it runs Quartznet CNN on the pre-processed input to perform the speech recognition task. Then, it encodes the resulting text and processes it with a lightweight LSTM encoder-decoder model to perform the joint slots and intent recognition. Now let's look at our implementation options for a couple of different usage scenarios. The usual sentence in our use case is from 2 to 4 seconds long, with approximately 12 words. We want to be able to execute our demo in real time. We looked at the number of operations, or max, required by the NN graphs we selected, and found that VPX5 will provide the processing performance we need in order to achieve our real-time performance goals on the Hubs FPGA platform. In case we move to an ASIC, using VPX5 would offer a performance that's many times faster than real-time. With this, one of the smaller VPX family members, like VPX2, becomes a great candidate for a production system. When switching from VPX5 to VPX2, all your investment into the embedded software is safe due to the vector-length agnostic programming model, allowing for smooth migration of software among all members of the VPX family. I hope you liked our new demo, which showed how our VPX processor can help move natural language processing from the cloud to embedded devices for lower latency and better power efficiency. If you would like to learn more about our VPX processor, please visit the link shown below. Thank you.